And I now give the floor to His Excellency Luca Beccari, Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Economic Cooperation, and Telecommunications of San Marino. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government of the Republic of San Marino, I would like to congratulate His Excellency Shabak Rosi on his election as president of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly and to wish him a fruitful work. The Republic of San Marino support the priority of your program and assure you, Mr. President, full cooperation in all work of the General Assembly. I would also like to extend my special thanks to Secretary General Antonio Guterres for his energy and determination in leading the United Nations in this difficult and challenging time. Mr. President, I'm grateful for the team chosen for this section, a watershed moment, transformative solution to interlocking challenges. It gives Member States the opportunity to constructively contribute to the work of the General Assembly. The increasingly evident interrelationship among global challenges highlights the need for Member States, today more than ever, to work together to overcome difficulties. It is clear that there is a link between multilateralism and global challenges, the scope of which goes beyond the capacity of each individual state, even the most powerful or techn technologically advanced, to face them on its own. Preserving the value of multilateralism and international cooperation, which underpin the United Nations Charter and Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, is of fundamental importance for promoting and supporting peace and security, development, and human rights. The Republic of San Marino considers it essential to continue to reaffirm its collective commitment to multilateralism, in particular in the framework of the General Assembly, as the most representative body of the United Nations on account of its deeply democratic nature, universal participation, and undisputed legitimacy. However, multilateralism cannot be more a statement of collective intention, but it must translate into concrete action to improve people's lives and leave nobody behind. Mr. President, we're facing difficult time with an unprecedented level of violence, mass atrocity, and displacement. The armed conflict across the globe caused immediate, immense suffering to millions of civilians. The war of aggression against Ukraine brought dramatic consequences for civilian population, including civilian death and destruction of vital infrastructure and massive displacement. The aggression against Ukraine has been strongly condemned by international community. The General Assembly resolution aggression against Ukraine demands that Russia immediately stop its military aggression and unconditionally withdraw all force from the entire territory of Ukraine and fully respect Ukrainian territorial integrity, sovereignty, and independence within its internationally recognized border. San Marino has decided to cooperate within the framework of international structure and mechanism, at the top of which is the United Nations Organization, because it believes in the strain of dialogue, democracy, and respect for, for others. In line with our values, the Captain Region of San Marino, in their message to the opening of the session of the Parliament last July, called all parties involved in the Ukraine conflict to renounce the use of force and to reopen the channel of dialogue and negotiation so that politics and diplomacy may prevail in the management of this crisis. No one should remain indifferent to war, but rather we should all work responsibly to create the condition for dialogue and peace with the full involvement of international institutions. Mr. President, San Marino is deeply concerned by the still ongoing armed conflict across the globe. We reaffirm our commitment to the principle of the responsibility to protect which is, is essential in the prevention of atrocity crime. Accountability is indeed another factor that plays an important role in preventing and stopping such crime. 
The Republic of San Marino reaffirmed its full commitment to the obligation under human and humanitarian law, such as the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime and Genocide, the Rome Statute and the Geneva Convention. San Marino reaffirmed its full support to the International Criminal Court, whose work is crucial in the fight against impunity for genocide and crime against humanity and its represent one of the core elements for the implementation of the responsibility to protect. The ICC, through its work, fosters accountability and thus promote prevention and reconciliation. The Republic of San Marino would also like to reiterate its support for initiatives such as the ACT Group Code of Conduct regarding Security Council, action against genocide, war crime, or crime against humanity, and French and Mexican Declaration on Voluntary Restraint Use of the Veto by the Permanent Member of the Security Council. Mr. President, children and youth are uniquely and often disproportionately affected by conflict and atrocity. San Marino stressed the need of strengthening the child protection capacity and to put children and youth at the center of effort to prevent atrocity. At the same time, we also encourage member states to adopt the relevant instrument on the protection of children, including the Paris Principle and the Safe School Declaration. Being part of the group of Friends of Children and Harmed Conflict, San Marino is particularly worried for the difficulty in the implementation of child protection activity in armed conflict situation. San Marino commend the dedication of the Special Representative for Children and Armed Conflict and of her office and appreciate the engagement of all the child protection personnel and partners involved. Moreover, San Marino is committed to the protection of women and girls and to supporting the prevention of sexual and gender-based violence, including conflict-related sexual violence. In addition, Persons with disability face additional risk and vulnerabilities in situations of armed conflict. Their needs should be duly taken into account and barriers to access information, evacuation, and emergency assistance should be lifted. San Marino is deeply disturbed and firmly condemned the growing number of deliberated attacks against the school, hospital, and place of workshop. We also firmly condemn attack against journalists, humanitarian workers, human rights defenders, and peacekeepers. These stakeholders and civil society actors can play an important role for reconciliation and for the prevention and early warning mechanism and should therefore be supported and protected. Mr. President, today the threat of nuclear weapon being used is much higher than it has been in the last decades. We condemn the Russian Federation dangerous nuclear rhetoric. Any threat of use of nuclear weapon is unacceptable and of the utmost concern. What is needed today is a steady and genuine commitment to international institutions and to disarmament. With the spirit, San Marino has participated in the 10th review conference of the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and in this first meeting of state parties, to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons early this year. We regret that at this critical time, the 10th Review Conference of the Non-Proliferation -Proliferation Treaty was not able to adopt its final document. San Marino will continue to work for the full implementation of this fundamental instrument. San Marino welcomed the positive outcome of the first meeting of state parties to the Treaty of the prohibition of nuclear weapon and huge all state committed to our final goal of a war without such weapon to join the TPNWV. Only honoring and revigorating our multilateral agreement, we will be able to put humanitary, humanity on a new path toward a world free of nuclear weapon. Mr. President, since, it's ni since 1945, the world is witnessing the highest number of violent conflict. Forced displacement have continued to grow in 2021 and 2022, where refugees were at the highest number. The war in Ukraine created one of the largest refugee crises of modern time. More than seven million refugees have fled Ukraine, most of whom are women and children, and a further seven million have been displaced inside the country. 
This refugee crisis comforts each member state with its responsibility. The people of San Marino, guardian of the century-old tradition of peace and solidarity, opened the door to the Ukraine refugees. Since the beginning of the war, the Republic of San Marino has welcomed more than 300 Ukrainian refugees, equal to 1% of the entire San Marinese population, thanks to the solidarity of public and private institutions, NGO, and with the help of many volunteers. Together with the refugees' crisis, the impact of the conflict may lead a global food crisis. Food insecurity affects the lives of millions of people across the world and is mainly concentrated in conflict-affected regions. The, the vast majority of stunted children live in countries affected by violence and conflict. Armed conflict displays firm farmers and can destroy agricultural assets and food stock. Furthermore, they disrupt market and virt a vital service for the food system. The ongoing war in Ukraine is disrupting supply chain and further affecting price of grain, fertilizer, and energy. In the first half of 2022, this caused further food price increase. A report uh, by the State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World 2022, the number of people unable to afford a healthy diet around the world rose by 112 million to almost 3.1 billion, reflecting the impact of rising consumer food price during the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has further expanded the fragilities in our agri-food system and the inequality in our society increased war, anger, and severe food insecurity. At the same time, we also should not underestimate the effect of climate change and climate disaster in aggravating food insecurity. For all these reasons, it is extremely important to keep food security on our agenda and to continue to incentivize sustainable production, supply and consumption of nutritious food in order to make healthy diets less costly and more affordable for all. Moreover, as promoter of the resolution which established the uh, 29 of September as International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste, San Marino firmly believes that the fight against food loss and waste will contribute to promote food security and welcome all the initiatives aiming at developing awareness in such responsible behavior. Mr. President, it is widely acknowledged that the COVID-19 crisis had a negative impact on global effort to realize the Sustainable Development Goal. At the end of 2021, the death caused by COVID-19 were nearly 15 million. With the overwhelming of the global health system and the disruption of many essential health services, the pandemic undermined years of progress fighting other diseases, in particular in developing countries. Compared with the pre-pandemic level, an additional uh, 75 million to 95 pe million people will live in extreme poverty in 2022. Billions of children significantly missed out on schooling, and over 100 million more children fell below the minimum reading proficiency level. Despite some encouraging uh, signs, the global economy recovery struggled to grow to the COVID-19 variant and continued vaccine inequity, together with rising inflation, major supply chain disruption, policy uncertainties, and unsustainable debt in developing countries. The impact of climate change continues to be felt across the world. COVID-19 further delayed the urgently need transition to green economies. Demand for cool oil and gas rebounded with an economy in 2020, uh, 2021 and will bring over the current decade an increase of global emission by almost 14%. If current trend continues, the heart could lose this natural uh, wealth of its ecosystem, which would in turn jeopardize global food security, water supply, and livelihood. Mr. President, the interconnection of the global crisis, COVID-19 pandemic, the climate change, the harmed conflict across the globe put a great risk to the achievement of the SDG by 2030. 
As the Secretary General called for in our common agenda, a renewed commitment to international cooperation is needed by the United Nations must adapt quickly the new global challenges in order to be more effective in carrying out its mandate. Reform must remain at the center of our action because they are crucial to future world sustainably and maintenance of international peace and security. We believe that Security Council reform should be an objective of all member states. This reform goal can be achieved only through a continuous dialogue among the state and the awareness that overcoming the uh, respective initial position is essential to negotiate the broadest agreement possible. In conclusion, Mr. President, a stronger multilateralism is essential if we want to build fair, just, and peaceful society where young people can live in dignity, women can have some opportunity, same opportunities as men, and where all minority and vulnerable groups are protected. I believe that the general debate is an important opportunity to renew our commitment to a stronger United Nations organization capable of coordinating economic, social, and environmental policies and translating them into an effective action at all levels. The Republic of San Marino, in accordance with its history and its tradition of freedom and democracy, firmly believe in this mandate and will support any action that help strengthen the United Nations in this process. Thank you for your attention. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Economic Cooperation and Telecommunications of San Marino.